Well, sabotaging U.S. elections and eating children aren't Russia's only foreign policy goals. They're also firmly committed to fighting ISIS, which they're doing. And now it appears possible that Russian forces may have killed the head of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The Syrian Human Rights Group announced today it has, quote, confirmed information pointing toward the death of Baghdadi. Whether or not it's true, it's interesting. It could be a big victory in the war on terror. So why aren't more in the U.S. more excited about it? And should we be willing to work with Russia against Islamic extremism? Ralph Peters is a retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel, and he joins us tonight. Colonel, thanks a lot for coming on. Hey, glad to speak with you, Tucker. And for the record, yes, maybe your friends take money from foreign governments. I don't, and my friends don't. I hope, I hope they don't. It's appalling how much of that happens. It and it's appalling indeed. how much of our policy is influenced by foreign governments. And you may see that at work now. The Saudis are dead set, of course, against Iran, and they have every reason to be. But I'm hearing a lot of people in Washington, and the Gulf states all feel the same way, a lot of people in Washington say all of a sudden, well, maybe, you know, defeating ISIS isn't such a victory. We've all been focused on defeating the Sunni terror threat embodied by ISIS, and now as we're moving toward achieving that, all of a sudden Iran is the real problem. Why shouldn't we take a moment to celebrate the potential death of Baghdadi? Well, indeed we should. Uh, but it's, uh, I would not jump to the con conclusion that the Russians killed him. They actually walked back their claim that they'd killed him. And if you look at the timelines, the odds are pretty good that if he's dead, and let's hope he is dead, he was killed by a coalition-backed aircraft. Because the Russians have not been seriously fighting ISIS. The Russians in Syria have been bombing hospitals, clinics, refugee columns, schools. And oh, by the way, uh, they've been bombing the people we've been supporting, the anti-Assad opposition. Whereas we, they have been letting us take care of ISIS, what, and we've done a good job. Well, I mean, there's, Russians are certainly brutal, and so I have no trouble believing anything that you just said. But you want an alliance with them? I, I don't know why we wouldn't. And, I, and well, I, it's, it's confusing to me why, when you have a power like Russia, which obviously has interests that diverge from ours, but has some that align here, they've lost a lot of people to Sunni terrorism. Why wouldn't we cheer them on in their effort to stamp it out? Well, certainly we would, uh, but. We can't have a, an anti-terror alliance with terrorists, which is what the Russians are. They're not Islamist terrorists, and they hate the United States of America. Again, bombing hospitals, clinic schools. But how about you know, uh, murdering dissidents and uh, journalists at home and abroad? Yeah, they're bad. You know, we have nothing in common with the Russians. Why don't More we... or less than we do with the Saudis, our allies Well, the Saudis, the Saudis are, I have no brook for the Saudis whatsoever. Really, because they're our main allies in this. They're right? not my main ally. And, you know, I was... I was warning about the Saudis decades ago. You can read what I wrote about them. And the problem with Iran is that Iran is now, we've alienated just about everybody. We've blown it right and left in the Middle East. And now you've got Iran building an empire that will stretch from western Afghanistan to the Mediterranean. We've been doing a great job fighting ISIS. Uh, we've got the Iraqis, the Kurds, especially moving in the right direction. But when ISIS is defeated, and it will be defeated and crush the caliphate, essentially is no more. When it is, we will not be welcome, but the Iranians will be. Because we have never had a strategy, we don't have a strategy, and we won't because we play jailbird checkers, and the Iranians and the Russians play checkers. But chess. I'm a little bit confused on a couple fronts. One, we've had over 3,000 Americans killed in this country by about a dozen acts of terror in the last 16 years. None of them committed by Shiites. None of them. Yeah, All looking. of them by Sunni extremists. So we actually don't face any domestic threat from Iran. We That's do face absolutely a, right. a massive threat from Sunni terrorists supported by Saudi Arabia and all these countries we say are our friends. A. B. If we're so afraid of Iran, then why did we kill Saddam Hussein, thereby empowering Iran? Because, we, because we were stupid. And Iraq... But why are the same people who supported that stupid act, the one you described as stupid, now agitating for a war with Iran? I'm confused. Well, I don't... I, just, I certainly personally don't know anyone who's agitating for a war with Iran. I do. I know a lot of people. Okay, well, you know different people than I do. I know people that think that we have to eventually stand up to the Iranians, thanks to President Obama's outright cowardice and the shameful uh, treatment of our sailors, for which John Kerry thanked the Iranians yes. when they were captured. But, you know, the Middle East is, is a very, very complex world. And we refuse to think clearly about it and honestly about it, just as you pointed out. Uh, no Americans have been killed on, in the United States by Shia terrorists, yes. Sunni terrorists. And yet, uh, our president just went to Saudi Arabia and praised the Saudis to the skies. Our president seemed determined to, to do any deal he can with the Russians. And the Russians hate, Vladimir Putin hates us. He is malevolent. And you, he, he is as close to pure evil as I can find. He's also brilliant. And so I don't understand why any American 
would want an alliance with Russia, we should be strengthening our alliances with democracies. Instead of trashing NATO, we should be building it up much more strongly. Uh, why, why attack Australia? Why attack Canada? For God's sake, I think, I it's think about you make a fair point. It's just hard to see why, and I'm not vouching for Putin's character, which he seems like a shady guy, a strong man for sure, wouldn't want to live there. He's a killer. Hard to see why he's a threat to us. And I, I, how many wars can we fight at once? How many people can, can we be in an opposition to at once? Why not just accept that people who are bad people share our interests and side with them? You sound like Charles Lindbergh in 1938 saying, Hitler hasn't attacked us. I Look, beg your pardon? Slow down. Hey, slow down, Colonel. Oh. I, I'm not in My, any you, way. You cannot compare me to someone who would make apologies for Hitler. And I don't think Putin is well, comparable make, to Hitler. I think Putin is. Look, I think it's a Putin, grotesque overstatement. Actually. Putin is. Well, I think. I think Putin, it's insane. Putin, fine. You can think it's insane all you want. You just compared me to a Nazi apologist because I asked a simple question, which is, well, slow down, slow down, no, which no. is, no, why does it contravene American interest because in a common Vladimir cause with a group Putin that's trying to kill ISIS? Because invaded his neighbors, broken the long peace in Europe, he assassinates dissidents and journalists, he bombs women and children on purpose in Syria, he is as bad as Hitler, and I'm sorry, if you, know, if you don't like the Charles Lindbergh thing, I will retract that. But let's just say you sound like someone in the 1938 saying, what's Hitler done to us? Putin is I would the hate to go of back. I would hate to go back and read your columns assuring America that taking out Saddam Hussein will make the region calmer, more peaceful, and America safer, when in fact it has done exactly the opposite and it has empowered Russia and Iran, the two countries you say you fear most. Let's just be totally honest here. Yeah. We don't always know the outcomes. Right. They're not entirely predictable. And so maybe we should lower the moral tone a little bit. Okay, well, well Puff, Rather than calling people accommodationists and say, we're not exactly well, sure what's going to happen. We can only make you, good decisions you made, day by day. You made your career being an American conservative patriot. And now you're suddenly cheering for Vladimir Putin? I'm not in any sense cheering for Vladimir Putin. Well, you and it's you not accommodate. It's not, it's not, I'm cheering for America as always. Our interests good. ought to come first. And to the extent that making temporary alliances with other countries serve our interests, I'm in favor of that. Making sweeping moral claims, grotesque ones, comparing people to Hitler, advances the ball not one inch. Vladimir actually. It Putin blinds us is to reality. Comparable. He hates America. He wants to hurt us. And I'm sorry. All this, suddenly Vladimir Putin's a good guy. Russia's okay. No, it's not. Russia is so evil. So what's your Russia moral test? So some, okay, so we cannot in any way do business or make common cause with a country whose leader is, quote, evil, who is, quote, a bad person. That takes most of the world off the table. Most countries are run by really bad people. You are That's talking not the about, question. You're not talking about dealing with them. You're talking about an alliance, an anti-terror alliance. Come on, that's talking very, very about, different. Talking about, first step, cheering on any attacks made by Russia against our mortal enemy, our real enemy, ISIS. Why not just say, that's great, I don't like Putin. I'm not living in Russia. I'm not taking money from the guy, but like a good deed is a good deed no matter who commits it. Why don't you well, say that? Putin isn't killing ISIS primarily. He's attacking the anti-Assad people while letting us fight ISIS. And are you convinced? And do you speak Arabic, by the way? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay, so. How's your it, Russian? It, it's non existent. Okay. And I would never claim to be a Russia expert, but well, I'm not sitting here Putin. talking about groups about whom I know very little, and I bet you're well, in yes, that category, you in Syria and saying they're freedom fighters, they're serving the interest of freedom or democracy or American interests, when in fact, a lot of these groups, we know very little about them. And some of them are truly bad people who don't have our interests at heart. And we're not backing the truly bad people. And how about Assad? Well, how do we know that? Is Assad a good guy? Do you think I don't know. I mean, if we align, if ask we the Christians align, and Jews if, who if, lived in Syria. If we align, <laughs> we protect If we align <laughs> with Russia, we are uh -huh. aligning with Iran. We are aligning with Assad. And that's bad because that's bad for American interests. Because why? Do you think Iran is good for American interests? I think Iran's a bad country, and in a lot of ways, against American American interests. But within the context of Syria, Assad was much better for America than the people I believe you hope to replace him with. The Kurds. How about the Kurds? So the Kurds are going to run Syria? No. Now we're in fantasy land. No, they're going to have an inter independent state. You're going to break up Syria into lots of little countries. Well, I'm not like, going to break it up. It's okay, going but that, to break that's up the point. Does it work so well in Iraq? Yeah. Well, it hasn't broken up yet. And the problem with Iraq was in 2003 when we had the chance, we didn't break it up. We didn't break it up. Last question. Would you, knowing what you know now, and I, and I hate to revisit this, but since you brought it up, knowing what you know now, that the deposing Saddam, his subsequent death, empowered Iran dramatically, and in fact, we explicitly helped Iran gain traction in Iraq. Do you think that was a wise idea? And do you think there are any lessons going forward in Syria that maybe when you take out a secular leader, the vacuum is filled by even worse people? Well, I think there's a, that's a, that is a valid point you can make. Yes, it often is. happens. But in 2003, we did a great thing inexcusably badly. 
Um, I'm a Rumsfeld killing the MP brigades. There are a lot of reasons for it. We believe we believed any any Iraqi emigre who spoke English with an Oxford accent and wore a well-tailored suit. Um, I mean, again, our intentions were great, but if I had it to do over again, no, I would not get rid of Saddam Hussein because we hadn't thought it through. Uh, my mistake. And, but and you're confident that we've thought through what comes after Assad, who's run the country for decades, pretty peacefully, actually? I think killing half a million of, of your own people probably doesn't mean you should re remain in charge. Now, what At, well, that, after the Civil War. I'm not making apologies for Bashar al-Assad. I'm really well, saying that happened like after. I'm it not. sounds like you're sitting here and making apologies for See, him. So because I'm asking rational questions about what's best for America, I'm a friend to strong men and dictators. No, uh, that is a conversation stopper, no, not, a not a beginning of a rational this is, conversation. No, this is not My a only point is that when Syria was run by Assad, 10% of the population was Christian, and they lived in relative peace, considering they and lived that, in the middle of Levant. That is absolutely true, and it's also yes. true. And so what's happened father, to those people now? His father killed 30,000 or more people. Well, what's happened? Now, let's be fair. You know, Barack Obama certainly blew it right, left, and center. Uh, through sheer trepidation, cowardice, the inability to ever make a decision. But we are where we are, with half a million, Syri or perhaps more by now, Syrians dead. Primarily killed by the Assad regime, the Iranians, Hezbollah, and now uh, the, the, the Russians. And yet you want us to align with the Russians, with Iran, with Assad. I want us to act in America's interest and stop making so shallow, I. sweeping moral claims about countries we don't fully understand and then hope everything will be fine in the end. Because but, I just saw that happen you're, you're and it didn't that, work. You're doing that with I'm Russia. I'm not doing it now. With Russia, you I'm merely doing. saying that if a country we don't like takes active steps to kill people who are a threat to us, I'm going to pause and applaud. I'm not going to stand back and compare their leader to Hitler because it makes me feel yes, virtuous. But, That's what but, I'm saying. But, but the, the, the fault in your logic is that Assad, the Iranians, the Russians are killing the anti-Assad forces. I'm sure, I'm we sure. But you haven't ISIS. explained why I, as an American, should be terrified by Iran or Assad. And I think American leaders should act in the interest of their own country primarily. That's the I number one job they have, but see, and they're not doing the it. Subject. You, you couldn't answer me on Putin, so you changed the subject to Assad. I want to know why you think Vladimir Putin's okay. I want to I don't think he's okay. I what, think it's great that he's fighting you, ISIS. Just, 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 ISIS is a threat to us, and we're being told. I'm you sorry. Want, you want a terror, an anti-terror alliance with Russia. What does Russia tangibly bring to the table? Um, bombs that kill ISIS. That's my view. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We have gone long. <laughs> Colonel Peters, thank you for joining us. It was a spirited conversation.